watch it now. Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Thunder 2004. In this episode of our season with Jeff Gordon, we're going to be doing race 4 of 36, the Bass Pro Shops MVNA 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And in the background, we have that song Guilt by Finger Tight playing. It's a nice song. In this episode, we're going to be racing the 2003 Looney Tunes Chevrolet because we're um, getting close to racing the regular paint scheme again. I think the next race after this one is like Bristol or something, maybe? And I'm thinking maybe I should race his regular paint team at Bristol, at Bristol because um, his, Bristol was one of his best tracks. Even though the last time he raced there in the Cup Series, he didn't do very well. Even though he used the uh, Rainbow Warrior scheme in that race. But anyways, first thing we're going to do is go to qualifying and see what this car setup is. And... Now that I think about it, I need to tell you guys right now that Atlanta is one of the hardest tracks for me to race at because I have to really push it a lot. So first lap, I'm going to figure out what the car setup is. Second lap, I'm going to try to improve if I need to on my lap time. I mean, if, if I get a top 15, I'm not going to really drive really hard because I want things to be interesting. If I, get a, if I qualify in the top 15, I definitely will be able to at least finish in the top 5. If I qualify in the top 10, I'm pretty sure I might be able to win the race. It's just... Passing cars and getting going is quite difficult for me whenever it comes to this track. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, I didn't let off enough whenever I did, so that needs to be confirmed next time I take that corner. Trying to figure out the car setup. It looks pretty, feels pretty nice, but that's not compared to what it is in race day. I already know that. I think it's a little tight right now. It feels nice, but it feels a little tight at the same time. What is this? 23rd. Yeah, I definitely need to improve on this lap time. Come on, turn. Make that Zodiac ass turn. Come on. I don't, I don't know. I don't Zodiac either, so whatever. Okay. I didn't break this time. I, I didn't break this time. I'm coming. I'm sliding up the top of the track as I make it into turn four. Okay, what do we get? Is it better? Better? Yeah, it is. Top half. Eleventh. Ah, uh, man, it's gonna be a struggle to win this race if I want to. It'll be the third win of the season if I win this race. I won the first two races back to back, and the third one at Las Vegas. Well, I actually found out I could have won that race had I not sped into pit road like a dingus. Um, my time interval from the leader was uh, actually less than five seconds, and they gave me a five-second five second speeding penalty. Now, this car felt really good. Qualifying 11th place, if I had maybe um, a lower tire pressure, I'm pretty sure I would have been able to turn the car just a little bit more, and I wouldn't have been sliding up the track as much. But the rear end would definitely be a problem as it is right now, because the rear end is a little loose, but it's, it really works with me right now. So... I like this car setup. I'm going to stick with it. So here we go. The Bass Pro Shops NBA 500 at Atlanta. Pre-race show. EA Sports welcomes you to Hampton, Georgia. Site of today's NASCAR Winston Cup race. The Bass Pro Shops MBNA 500. I think we're in for some incredible racing, judging by this track's history. There sure have been some incredible finishes here at Atlanta. In the March race of 2001, Kevin Harvick beat Jeff Gordon to the checkered by mere inches to win his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. Given the circumstances that. and the emotion of that victory, that is one that people will talk about for decades to come. Jeff Gordon looks to continue his top five streak with a good finish here. I spoke with one of the tire changers on that team this morning. The top five streak. He was what are you standing in victory about? lane when I saw him, and he assured me they'd be there seventh at the end in the of last this race. race. We'll soon see if that's the case. But with the streak they're on, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah, streak. Terry Labonte has been called the Ice Man because of his cool demeanor under pressure, but maybe the nickname Iron Man is more appropriate. That's right. Labonte set a record for consecutive race starts with 655. That's over 20 years without missing a race. Jack Sprague is towards the bottom of the points list this season. And how frustrating must that be? 
You're working just as hard as everyone else, yet you just can't seem to finish well on race days and gain the valuable points you need. Those guys need a good finish just to regain their confidence as a team. Same jet three times in a row. Okay, so we got our, our teammate Jimmy Johnson on pole, Kirk Bush, Elliot Sadler, Bill Elliott, Dylan Hart Jr., Sterling Marlin, Tony Stewart, Robbie Gordon, Jeff Burton, and Matt Kenseth. And that's the top ten. I'll be starting right behind uh, Jeff Burton and Matt Kenseth. Green flag is out, and we are underway here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Okay, I'm not moving my way through the pack the right way. I need to move the other way. I think I said that at this track last time I came here, by the way. I don't remember. Whoa, Dale Jarrett's right in front of me. Well, yeah, but really close. I'm seeing some sparks. I'm pretty sure you saw that, too. Oh, I need to get in the draft to go up the track. I got tight whenever I went in the corner because I took it terribly wrong whenever I came here last time. Uh, last lap. First one. Whatever. The last lap. Hey, Elliot Sadler, you dumbass. Don't do that. Golly, that was all him trying to block me whenever I was already getting my nose underneath. He just randomly decided to block. How's the car feel? It feels tight because I'm trying to run fast. And, uh... Elliot Sadler, you're really pissing me off, by the way. You really are. I'm gonna dig it deep this time. Number 38. Get out of the way. And he's not pissed that I'm driving like that. He knows that I'm. He's pissing me off. I. I that's entertaining. Whoa, the car. Um, slid a bit where he came out of the turn four. Okay, we're gonna pass Ricky Rudd this time, definitely, because he's way up at the top. Ugh, I'm trying to keep it at the bottom. I just can't do it. And then he's freaking crossover. Well. I thought I could do it, but I keep on getting tight as I enter turn turns two and turn four for some reason. I can't hold the line because of how much uh, momentum my car gets as I dig it into the corner. Uh, can we do it this time? I'm trying to practice digging into the corner so I can freaking make a pass and not lose it. See, look, every time I brake so I can keep my speed steady, it tightens up a little bit, and it's just frustrating, because if I don't break, then I'm going to get tight immediately and go sliding up the track like I do sometimes. Okay, we're back in 11th again. It took us freaking five laps to get back to where I started. That's... Golly, it's like... I feel as if the AI doesn't know where they are on the track sometimes. Dale Jarrett's like, oh, wait, I'm in his way. Whoa! Gotta run into the corner that time. Look at this. The car gets tight every time I enter turn two and turn four. And I make a lot of my passes in turn two. So, well, going into turn one, but I get tight on their, when they're on my outside. I got into, I think that was Jeff Burton a while ago. And now if you look at that bird crap on the right side of my rear end. Okay. Robbie Gordon and Jeff Gordon are not related. Dumbass, if you didn't know that. <laughs> of course not. All these last names. The only ones that aren't related are freaking Robbie Gordon and Jeff Gordon. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Martin Truex Jr. aren't related. Because Jr., but no, they're not. I don't know. Stupid names and people and... I don't know. Big, big fail at Daytona not remembering whether Kenny Wallace and Rusty Wallace are related. For some reason, I was looking at their faces in my brain and it wasn't happening. And by the way, I probably just drove Robbie Gordon nuts as we entered turn one that time. Okay, we're up to seventh in the top ten. Behind Matt Kenseth now. He actually started in front of me, so he's been moving up a bit too. He started in tenth, and now he's in sixth, so he has moved up four spots. And I've moved up four spots. I'm going to change that. 
my benefit. Okay, I mean, see, this is what I mean. The pack really begins to spread apart, and it's really hard to catch cars. I don't know if you saw the first Atlanta race last season with Tony Stewart. That was back whenever I was crap quality. But they really spread apart, and it's hard to catch cars and pass them. Okay, Matt Kenseth, I don't know why I was going to try to do that. It was a dumb move, but still. You could have moved over and just let it happen. I'm Jeff Gordon. You don't get in Jeff Gordon's way. Unless you want to be Elliot Sadler, of course. I don't know what his problem was. I just went sliding up to the top of the track as I was about to go into turn one. Okay. Kurt Busch. Speaking of Kurt Busch, I remember the last time I raced here with Tony Stewart, the thumbnail was me getting extremely close right here in the corner. And look, we didn't do that this time. We just got by him. Now we're in the top five uh, as we pass Delano Jr. and Kurt Busch. Fourth place behind definitely Bill Elliott. It would never be Jeremy Mayfield. Golly. I'm trying to get on the outside and pass him. I didn't feel like the inside was much of an idea because of where I'd be going into the corner. That was a really dumb idea to try to pass on the outside because it's a D-Oval, you know? D-Ovals will murder you if you try passing in them. Especially in NASCAR Thunder 2002. Whenever I get into the D-Oval in NASCAR Thunder 2002 at Texas, Atlanta, and uh, Lowe's Motor Speedway, Charlotte, oh my gosh. Everything goes to shit if I try passing the D-Oval in that game. Especially at Charlotte, because, well, I can barely finish a race at Charlotte. I'd be lucky if I could do that whenever we play that game. Okay, we're going to pass on the outside of Tony Stewart. I lose all my momentum, right, whenever I get next to him. I thought Bill Elliott was a lot closer than that, because his indicator is at the bottom of the screen. But he's way back there. I wish the indicator would fade out so I could tell that he's not close. Game has not worked that way. Uh, you know what? It's JC1424 right now. And Jimmy Johnson's in front, but still. Let me give Tony Stewart a chance. He's my favorite driver in the game. Uh, that's not where the car belongs, dumbass. Hmm. Oh gosh. I don't know if working with other drivers works right at this track. I'm not trying to pass him. I'm literally trying to push him to catch uh, Jimmy Johnson. And he's my teammate. He started on pole, but still an idea. I don't even remember who started on the outside of the pole. I mean, I, I said it and everything. I said such and such after I said Jimmy Johnson, but I don't remember. Uh, I can't recall stuff like that. I think it was Kurt Busch. I have that idea in my head right now. Tony? I don't want to pass you. I just don't. Because you're you. As a matter of fact, I want to make you like this ultimate ally. I mean, you're my favorite driver. I would like that throughout the season. Okay, come on, come on. Well, Jimmy Johnson's had to hit road, so Tony Stewart's going to take the lead. This could really help him in points, couldn't it? Uh, da 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 da! I could have passed him a lot earlier. But I'm kind of on a making an ally thing right now. This is a nice race so far. Hmm. This, this is going to take a while, isn't it? I just got to stay really close behind him and right in his lane if I want him to become like 100%. Oh, whoa. The car kind of gets loose as you exit the corner right there. Get in my way. Get in my way. I need to draft you. I need to draft you into forwardness. This weird draft wake sound effect thing is so weird in this game. Oh, shit. Wait, you weren't talking about him? I see Tony at way at the bottom of the track, and I thought he was going to take a pit stop. And he, he moved over a little bit, but he wasn't taking a pit stop, so what, what the frick? This game is trying to play with me, and it's, it's not funny. It's not. It scared the crap out of me, because he said that as soon as we got to that part of the track, and Tony moved over, I thought Tony was going to take a pit stop. I'm pretty sure he is right now, because he's way down there. 
I need a lead lap though. Okay, so Tony's not taking a pit stop this time. Okay, let's just not take pit stops. Pit stops are dumb. And I'm not really in need of leading laps very much. Considering um, I have the points lead right now after winning the first two races of the season and finishing in the top ten at Las Vegas. Now, Tony Stewart, he could use a bit of a boost. I can tell he's taking a pit stop now. He jerked his car from the outside. Some of the leaders are coming in together. So I'm going to lead my lap this time and take my pit stop on lap 20. I'm pretty sure in like five seconds it's going to save fuel tank. Um, almost empty or whatever. I've gotten very used to the car setup since qualifying... And I call my qualifying first lap practice, everything else is just um, driving and getting used to it or whatever. At the same time. Whoa, yeah. It's tight. Okay, that was good. I was like, eh, no tongue, no tongue. No, don't, don't tongue while you're trying to take your pit stop. That's just my focus crap, some people do that. Okay, so I didn't speed in pit road, that was a good entry. I started to slide just the slightest bit, I don't know if you noticed that, because I, I can feel everything, and you, you have to look at the rear end and the, listen to the tires or whatever, but I only slid just a little bit. Look at Yosemite Sam on the, uh, the right quarter panel. I can't tell left from right because I'm a NASCAR fan. I'm right-handed, yet we take left turns, and it's just, it ruins your brain. I forgot to get on the gas like an idiot, so... Oh gosh, Jimmy Johnson. Don't get on the track yet. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to get on now. And Ryan Newman's going to take fourth place from me, so now I'm still in the top five, but I don't know if I'm going to win this race, because even though I had this really big lead with Tony freaking Stewart, something, that I don't know if they used strat pit strategy and got two tires or what, but there's no way in hell you can have a pit stop that faster than me on four tires. Me and Tony were like seconds away, if I can remember correctly. And Bill Elliott wasn't even on the bottom of my screen anymore. Okay. This game. I don't think I'm going to win this race. Tony Stewart's behind me, and I don't know if he's going to stick with me whenever I'm trying to get past Ryan Newman. Dang, I got a really good corner that time. I noticed because, whoa, I'm trying to not hit Ryan Newman. I'm trying to get on the inside, but I don't want to lose control of the car as I move it too much or something. Because you can move too much here at Atlanta, especially exiting corners. Like I said, D ovals are just kind of a bad place to pass at in this game, in any game really, because there's like a, a shift of lanes and everything, and it it's just. Ugh. I mean, there's some games where passing the D oval is not some crazy ass thing that you shouldn't try doing, like NASCAR and PSP, because the cars are easier to control whenever you're driving in a straight line or something like that. I don't know how to explain it. The physics of NASCAR PSP make it more simple. Of course, the AI drives like a bunch of dumbasses all the time. Okay, so getting we're passing cars rather quickly. I think we might be able to win this race. Okay. Jimmy Johnson's in the lead, and he's definitely led the most laps this race. Well, yeah, he will lead the most laps this race because by the time I, by the time I get to him, he's going to have led the most laps. And I see Matt Kenseth has progressed. He was in sixth earlier, and I passed him and put him in seventh, and then he's moved really well. I like Matt Kenseth. He's like my second favorite driver now. He's almost tied with Kyle Busch, but I'll say Mackenzie is my second favorite driver. My favorite driver is, Joe, is uh, Joey Logano. Now, everybody's probably like, what the hell is this guy's problem? He doesn't make any sense right now. How can you like those guys both? Honestly, I've always liked Mackenzie, but the progress that Joey Logano has made the past few years has been pretty cool. I mean, he drives like Dale Earnhardt. And, well, his personality is different. But he drives like Dale Earnhardt, and he's all rough and aggressive and stuff. And he wins races and stuff. Uh, he's got a pretty nice team. He's got one of the best teams and most annoying teams in NASCAR in some cases for other fans. But 
In all reality, I view them as, as drivers, not, not like comic book villains and heroes and stuff. You know? I don't know. When it comes to sports, like, the team I hate more than anything else in football is definitely the Seahawks because they've shut down the Green Bay Packers twice before my eyes and it sucks so bad. The first time I saw them do it, extremely controversial pass whenever the game was um, basically over according to the clock, but you know, once the play starts, the game's not over until the uh, play is over or whatever. I'm kind of working with Matt Kenseth and it's not helping very much with the cars behind me in my rear view mirror. I'm just trying to make an ally and talk about some stuff. Uh, stuff. Um, speaking of, of sports and um, stuff to talk about in my own videos, whenever it comes to comments in my comment section, I get more comments about, like, you know, stuff that doesn't happen to do with anything that happened in this episode or stuff I'm going to do in the future in the series or just when the next episodes are coming out. There will either be one or two NASCAR Thunder 2004 uh, races in a season. Matt Kinsey through driving too slow for me. I almost killed Tony Stewart. And then, um, paint schemes. Uh, a lot of the paint schemes I'm going to race are to be determined. Because I can't determine all these at the same time, and I kind of just do it by which I haven't chosen. Yeah, I give up on Matt Kinsey because he's been really slow. He's been slowing me down. I mean, look, Tony Stewart's getting by him now. Which is good. I like Tony Stewart, of course. I, I love Tony Stewart. I'm addicted to Tony Stewart. Okay, he's down low. I was like, he's not appearing in the mirror. Oh no. Don't pass into the oval, Tony. Don't. I'm gonna get the draft from Jimmy so I can get out of his. So I can get him out of my butt. I'm gonna pass Jimmy right here. Oh! Car's getting tight. It always does that in turn two and four. It turns two and four. Gosh. Tires are worn. Um. I mean, by this time, we're gonna have one to go. Can I hold off Jimmy Johnson for the win here at Atlanta? Oh no, don't clip the apron, you stupid son of a biscuit. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going to do the same thing I did in NASCAR Thunder in 2002 in that vlog a while back, a few months ago. Hopefully, uh, Tony Stewart gets by him, because, you know, Tony Stewart goes before everybody. Come on, Tony, you can do it. Don't, don't get in Jimmy's draft, you stupid zodiac car. I was saying something about my comments a while ago. I prefer comments about stuff that happens in the episode, but me talking about other sports and other drivers and stuff is probably going to cause that to be in the comment section. But I, I get comments from off-the-wall stuff that has nothing to do with the episode. Well, we won. Our third race of the season, the Bass Pro Shops NBA 500 and the, uh, the 2003 Looney Tunes Chevrolet. Kurt Busch finished third and Jimmy Johnson finished fourth, so I guess Jimmy Johnson wasn't all he was cut out to be once I got by him. And Jimmy Johnson and Kurt Busch, so that's something. Feel bad for my teammate, but still, that's that's Tony freaking Stewart. And it helps him out in the points, I guess. And it, Jimmy Johnson led the most uh, laps in this race, so that's gonna uh, help him out in the points. I know he led the most laps in this race. He was he started on pole. I passed him whenever he was in the lead. Um, he was in the lead after the pit stop, so he definitely had the point. Uh, led the most laps in this race. I led like. 3, 2 maybe? Now let's turn Atlanta into Atlanta. I'm doing Atlanta nuts. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about these celebrating stuff. Oh well, yeah. By the way, I know how to not overheat my engine in victory celebration. Wait a second! We can do this. Take the whale and shortcut. The, the modified shortcut, whatever. All right. Look, I drive like AI. Okay, the car got the back of the car got all weird whenever I came to it. Here we no. There we go. Perfection. Okay, so post race. Not a single caution lap was run in the whole race. That's good news for all these teams because that can mean only one thing: no major wrecks. Jeff Gordon never even got a scratch in this race. That's going to be a happy crew when they get back to the shop. 
they can immediately go to work on next week's car without having to worry about fixing anything from this race. It makes for a much less stressful atmosphere. Jeff Gordon gained some respect out there in this one. Normally these guys are so competitive that a driver has to work his tail off for every spot. But when you have some friends out there, you can occasionally catch a break. And that can help a bunch because every position and every tenth of a second counts. Hmm. Well, looking at these highlights, there were two things that I noticed. I noticed me sliding into the corners, as you probably just saw a while ago. I slid into turn one quite a bit. And then there was also, um, what else did I notice? Um, yeah, the beginning of the race, me getting to the back of Elliott Sadler, like right here. Elliott Sadler held me up a lot for like, I don't know, two laps or something. I started out, you know, falling back a little bit in the pack, but then I got going eventually. Look at this. He was just in the way for two laps, and it was ridiculous. But he got out of the way, so I made allies with Tony Stewart and Matt Kenseth. And Jimmy Johnson is probably pissed about me not doing anything to help him. I mean, he, he led the most laps all by himself. That's something. That's what I was talking about a while ago. The, um, the uh, sliding into the corner steal. So, victory lane. Third time in the season. Race four. Victory at Atlanta. This makes up for Jeff Gordon not beating Kevin Harvick in 2001. I believe it's 2001. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh. Okay, I'm not gonna do the duty thing this time. Yeah, that thing. Okay. I actually was at the uh, highlight screen for quite a while, so whenever Avenged Sevenfold, uh, that song, Chapter 4, came on. It probably was playing a little too long for copyright or something. I might mute that or something like that, maybe. Um, I don't even remember if this is copyright or not, so I'm going to mute the game audio and just turn it to 11 on the TV. Hopefully it won't be much of a problem. So, Tony Stewart, 96% ally. I really got the job done with him. Uh, Matt Kenseth, 48% ally, so almost made it to 50%. Jimmy Johnson, 86%, so I think I should work with him. And I did work with Kenny Wallace a while back at Daytona. I don't think I really did anything with Kenny Wallace in this race. I remember he was right behind me. Well, he started next to me, and then he was behind me for a while whenever I was trying to work my way through the pack. I don't know. I, I have almost all the songs from the soundtrack. Um, so, we won here at Atlanta. That's cool. Okay, so there are the top ten, the uh, the top ten finishing positions. What else am I gonna say? Um, yeah, Matt Kenseth, he started in ninth place and made it to fifth. Okay, what else do we have? We have Kevin Harvick in tenth, Dylan Art Jr. in ninth. Um, let's see Ricky Rudd right there. Okay, let's look at the. Let's get all down and dirty into the the finishing standings. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson did lead all the laps. All the laps he led the most laps. I can I could tell just from how he was doing in this race. He led 24 out of 32 laps in this race. Let me think. 20 24 32. That's um. I'm trying to think about what that is. That's like isn't that like three quarters of the race or something? I can't math. I can't math right now. I'm trying to record all this stuff as fast as possible so it doesn't take too long. What else we got? Um, I led four laps. I thought I was like two or three, but four. And Tony Stewart also led four laps whenever I was working with him. So yeah, I made my favorite driver 100% ally, but it drops it down to 96 because it's a stupid game. I don't know why they do that. That's dumb. I don't love you that much. That was just in the race. It's stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Sterling Marlin, how you doing? Okay, what else do we have? Is our rookie of the race in here somewhere? Casey Mears, Casey Mears, please, Casey Mears. Yay, Casey Mears! Yeah! He started 23rd and 20, uh, finished 24th. Dang it. But he was the best finishing rookie in this race. Now, where's stupid freaking loser Jamie McFrickin' Murray yet? I'm just playing around. He started 39th and finished 30th. So he had a better race... But Casey Mears still finished better. I mean, I don't, 
don't, I don't think that's a legit way to say something, but... Okay, Joe Nemechek way back here. Ken Schrader, Brett Bodine, and... Um, Kenny Wallace, he started 12th and 35th. That's what I'm saying. If he starts in the top half of the field, he finishes in the bottom half. If he starts in the bottom half of the field, he finishes in the top half. And it's so stupid. He's like this weird, weirdest driver in the game for me. And same thing with Hermie Sadler, but, you know, he's supposed to stink. Uh, Chase Montgomery, Jack Spray Goo all over the place. Jack Ass Spray Goo all over the place, whatever. Okay. David Green. I think this is the first time racing this season. I'm probably dead wrong like an idiot. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to let this song play again, so we're just going to put that back on 8. Okay, I can't see that the freaking volume thing is, way on my, is in the way on my screen. Okay. Okay, so Christian Fittipaldi overheated his engine. Overheated his engine. Wait a second. I want to see, did anybody lead laps but have not that good a race? No. All the people that led laps uh, wound up finishing in the top five. That's a that's pretty brilliant. It was more it was quite a dominant race. Well, that was a pretty good race, but I do think that the Las Vegas race was a little bit more entertaining because I made more mistakes and that's the whole Tom and Jerry theory or whatever. Oh, alright. Okay, so that's that is um Definitely one of those copyrighted songs, so we're just gonna put it on 11 again. And then, oh, the next race is not um, Bristol, it's Darlington. Now, why would I remember this stupid schedule? Uh, I think we should drive his regular painting at Darlington, anyways. Okay. Okay, we got the winners Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon, Michael Waltrip, Jeff Gordon. Okay, so here are the standings. Jimmy Johnson is still in second in points, but we got Tony Stewart in third, so. That's nice. At least my teammate is right there. But I, would, I, I actually would prefer Tony Stewart in second and Jimmy Johnson in third. Because that's how my stupid existence works. Um, Bobby Labonte is in the top ten. I don't, I don't recall him finishing very well in the last race. I don't even remember. I never even saw him in the points table whenever I was looking at it a while ago. I probably missed him. Uh... Dale Earnhardt Jr. is recovering from his overheated engine at North Carolina, and me bashing him on the last lap to hold up seventh position wasn't very polite after his terrible season he's been having, you know. But he's tied in points with Kevin Harvick. That's interesting. Um, where's Casey Mears is still being the rookie of the season so far in 23rd place. Where's Jamie McFrickin Murray in 29th? All right. Hmm. Greg Biffle, he's not too good a rookie right now. Do 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 do. Okay, so David Green has definitely r ran more than one race this season if he's in 42nd position on the points table. I that he had a great race, and I don't even remember what position he finished in. Wait a second. He has 123 points, so that's either two races or one. I don't know what I'm talking about. I wouldn't know anything. All right. Look at all the. I have no rivals. I'm a badass. I have no rivals. Of course, I think a badass would have a bunch of rivals and be winning races a lot, so. But, you know, that's badass, too. Having nothing but allies. And a, a, a neutral. And that, that's just Kenny Wallace, though. He's weird. Okay. My best ally is Tony Stewart. How entertaining. Okay, awards. I didn't get a single damn one. Dang it. And, yeah. So... Christian, Christian Fittipaldi got the rookie of the race at Daytona. I didn't even know that. But Casey Mears is definitely the rookie of the... the, uh... rookie of the season or whatever. So far. And yeah, here's rookie of the year. I kept on saying season, but... whatever. Uh, Jamie McMurray behind him and Christian Fittipaldi, so this kind of makes sense. Jamie McMurray is usually the best one, but this time it's Casey Mears, so that's cool. And they both race for the same team. Okay... Holes. I've got one. Jimmy Johnson has two, so that was the second one that he got at Atlanta, and Bill Elliott got one. Manufacturers, duh. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, Jimmy Johnson's led more laps than me. That's not good. <laughs> that, that's not. It really isn't. Well, this song is over. 
Um, I will see you next time whenever we go to Darlington for race five, the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. There's the game's theme song. So, that's that. Um, let the episode end with this song on, you know? Episode over. <laughs>